powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good Sunday evening, folks. Thank you for tuning into the Q2 Weekend News. To close out your weekend, I'm Dustin Kleeman. Our top story tonight, Alabama's special Senate election is a little over a week away. While many believe the race is to be a toss-up, a new CBS poll puts Republican Roy Moore ahead of the Democratic nominee, Doug Jones, 49 to 43 percent. It also found that 71 percent of Alabama Republicans think the sexual misconduct allegations against Moore are false. CBS's David Bagnell reports from Birmingham. At the Pelham Diner in Shelby County, Alabama, we met Penny Lloyd, who told us that despite the allegations against Judge Roy Moore, she will vote for him. He is the lesser of two evils. Was there ever a hesitation? No, not after he won the primary, no. Uh, I recognized it as a railroad job, a hit job, pretty quickly. Penny's husband is George Lloyd. He too is voting for Moore. I believe that it's very possible that all of the women could be absolutely uh, truthful. That it, but on the other hand, I think it's very possible that the other camp uh, could have motivated a lot of women to do and say what they're saying. Kayla Smith says her decision is based on policies. There are a few of Roy Moyers that I agree with, but I think Doug Jones hits more of my priorities. Have the allegations against Mr. Moore turned you off? I feel in the middle about them. Um, personally, I am one to definitely believe a woman if she says that she was sexually assaulted, but for it to have come out so far later, I feel like that is very weird. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has said in the past that he believes Roy Moore's accusers and he thinks Moore should step aside. But today, McConnell said he thinks the people of Alabama should decide. There's another U.S. Senator from Alabama. His name is Richard Shelby, and he's already voted absentee. He did not vote for Roy Moore. Instead, the senator says he wrote in the name of another Republican. David Begno, CBS News, Birmingham, Alabama. In other news tonight, the president says the FBI is in tatters. Today, Mr. Trump responded on Twitter to reports that an FBI agent was removed from special counsel Robert Mueller's team investigating the election. Laura Podesta has tonight's report. President Trump is slamming the Federal Bureau of Investigation. On Twitter Sunday, he wrote the agency is the worst in history and retweeted that the FBI director, quote, needs to clean house. The president was responding to reports that a veteran FBI counterintelligence agent was removed from the team investigating Russian election meddling. That agent was discovered sending anti-Trump text messages. I would just say this to the president. There's an ongoing criminal investigation. Comey may be part of it. You tweet and comment uh, regarding ongoing criminal investigations at your own peril. I'd be careful if I were you, Mr. President. That warning from a Republican comes as the ranking Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Committee says her panel's investigation into President Trump's campaign and possible Russian collusion is also progressing. The Judiciary Committee has an investigation going as well. Uh, and it involves obstruction of justice. And I think what we're beginning to see is the putting together of a case of obstruction of justice. Senator Dianne Feinstein said evidence for that case is coming partly from the continual tweets from the White House. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. We'll come back to Montana now. Trial is set to begin tomorrow for the man accused in the strangulation and burning death of a Crow Agency woman last year. 19-year-old Demarzio Sanchez will be tried in U.S. District Court in Billings on one count of first-degree murder for the death of Royland Rides Horse. Prosecutors plan to use the victim's so-called dying declarations at trial, but defense attorneys argue the dying word should not apply because the victim didn't know she would ultimately die. Rides Horse was beaten during a ride home with Sanchez and four other people in April 2016. When the vehicle stopped, Rides Horse was dragged from the car and strangled. Prosecutors say Sanchez ordered the others to strip the victim before he doused her in gasoline and set her on fire. Rides Horse was hospitalized with third-degree burns for two months before her death. Two co-defendants of Sanchez have already pleaded guilty to lesser charges. The case is expected to go to the jury on Thursday. We'll be following. We switch gears now. We go to the weather scene. Creating at least one cancellation we want to let you know about. Busby mm. schools tomorrow will not have class. 
Rob Griggs telling us more about yeah. it's dicey for people. It is. I got a, a note from my friend Ron Berman over in Lame Deer along the Bernie Divide. It says three inches of snow on the ground. Wow. Temperatures are falling, so even though this system is moving a little bit to the south, it's still going to create some problems for the commute tomorrow for sure. I uh, had a couple of pictures, though. One of these came to our Facebook, Q2 Facebook page from Lynn Richardson just as that storm was moving past Jim Mountain and the uh, uh, Clark Canyon there near Cody that was moving in. Oh, yeah, supermoon. Did we mention we've got a supermoon out there? Yeah, you can't see it now because it's cloudy and snowing. But in Glendive, not too bad. Sandy Dara got that nice picture for us. Uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to glimpse that supermoon before it's all over till January 1st. Snowfall shifting south into Wyoming. No accumulations expected now for Billings because it has moved to the south of us. But a slippery commute is likely tomorrow morning. So we're going to take a look at all that with the extended forecast through the work week in just a little bit. Dustin? All right, Rob, thank you very much. And tune in to Montana this morning with Victoria and Ed Macintosh for the very latest on closures as well as conditions when you hit the door. The Road Dogs tout their annual toy run as the oldest and biggest in Montana for good reason. Today, a record number of motorcycles, 760, paraded from Fire Station 1 in downtown Billings to the Rimrock Mall. The Road Dogs and other clubs take toys to the mall for the Salvation Army. They're bringing joy to kids. They bring all the gifts inside. It takes many hands to make like work. And the goal of burying the 12 foot Christmas tree. It's not easy. That's a 33 year tradition to make sure that every kid has a gift for Christmas. Put a smile on kids' faces on Christmas morning. Even if they only have that one present, it, it, it helps brighten their day a little better. It's a warm feeling. It, it's really awesome to see that everybody come together to help the community out and help the kids for Christmas. You know, the compassion of the road dogs is wonderful. If it was just a one-time thing, it was, would still be great. But they've been doing this for 33 years. Today, we want to honor them and say thank you for helping out the kids in, in this community in Billings. Here's some more people helping other people. Families filled the pub station today for the 8th Annual Portraits for a Cause. The event ran all afternoon and this morning, providing discounted family photos and headshots. All the proceeds benefit Hot 1019's Big J Show, Santa Claus for a Cause. The charity provides deserving families with food and gift cards for the holiday season. Now, Tracy Moore Photography started Portraits for a Cause back in 2009 and it's grown every year since. This year, 12 local photographers packed the pub station to help with the picture taking. And the goal is to raise enough money to feed at least 50 families this Christmas season. I also hope to raise enough money this year to purchase gas cards in addition to grocery gift cards for families. Go to our Montana Egg segment. Pulse crops like pea dry beans, lentils, and chickpeas play a huge role in healthy diets in countries around the world. And as Russell Nimitz shares with us in tonight's Montana Ag Report, they're also a very powerful and versatile crop for Montana farmers who use them to improve soil health and generate income from local and global markets. People are finding out that uh, pulses aren't just for soups, you can use them in just about everything and the ingredient market is huge. The pulse crop acreage across Montana is exploding and for good reason. It's consumer demand like this that has farmers like Circle's Jerry Schillinger interested in raising pulse crops. Well, it's, it's got to be huge. We're the number one pulse growing state in the nation. So it's added, especially to northeast Montana, now starting to move into the triangle. And I got to visit with an old friend here yesterday that had his first chickpea crop this year. And, and it was like uh, manna from heaven, really, for them. He had, he had a, a nice crop and good prices. And it's really uh, taken some of the edge off the situation we've been in and the other crops. During Montana Pulse Day in Great Falls, the event drew farmers who were new to raising pulses to those like Mike Waters from Freud, who has been raising them since 1996. Well, the reason we got into pulses was kind of replace summer fall, and uh, maybe uh, defray that cost of summer falling. Uh, but since we got into it, we've, we've made money raising pulses, so we just stuck with them, and it's uh, improved our our wheat and, and durum uh, production besides it's been a beneficial rotation. Like other commodities, farmers are also finding it a lot easier these days to sell their pulse crops here in Montana. I think when we first started, we, it was important to have a market for our contract for them right away. But that was because the, we, the processing plants and, and the, the buyers were so far away. But I think now with the, the increase in processes and buyers in the, in the state of Montana, you know, you could, you could uh, store them and, and uh, uh, sell them later. And besides the agronomic and economic benefits, raising pulses is also good for Montana's wildlife population. And just an all-around holistic thing. 
Uh, it's a fantastic thing for the wildlife too. It's just, it really makes farming a lot more exciting and fun. As consumer demand for foods made from pulses continues to grow, we'll continue to see more Montana farmers raise them. Because as we've learned, not only is it a good sound agronomic decision, it also just makes good old fashioned dollars and cents. I'm Russell Nimitz reporting MTN News. Thank you very much, Russell. Over 80% of the pulse crops grown in the United States are grown by farmers in Montana and North Dakota. Still to come on the Sunday edition of the Q2 10 o'clock news, these heroes have a sound and they're looking to help fellow veterans. You'll want to stick around for this story coming up next. And later in sports, Bobby Houck is already making house calls. The first recruiting news of his second tenure as Grizz head coach coming up. You're watching MTN News with Dustin Kleeman. Storm Tracker Weather with Rob Griggs and Sports with Casey Conlon. This is the Q2 10 o'clock news in high definition.